today I'm going to be rocking some really nice pretty hair from a company by the name of Lou Hair. Going to be a start to finish slay. It's been highly requested to redo the elastic band method. Now I've done it a few times here on this channel, but I do speed through a lot of times and I do recognize that I do speed through like really, really, really fast. So this is going to be literally as detailed as I can get it. Purchase from this company, you get a beautiful nicely crafted box it looks like a gift because it has a little cute bowl on it so first thing you see is your wig caps in here and then you have your beautiful wig oh look they even included the elastic see they had your back so we're going to be actually using the elastic they get i think or maybe i'll use mine just so that you guys can see where i get mine and stuff this is the wig here you can see all the information here this is a free part standard average size lace front Weight 22 inches deep, natural color, deep curly. So, and then this is what the beautiful hair looks like. Definitely gonna do a quick co wash on this hair off camera, but before I do that, I'm gonna show you guys the elastic band method. So, step one is to get your lace and some scissors so that you can get the perfect amount of lace for your head to fit on your wig. So, the company actually gave us a piece of um, elastic let's see exactly what they gave so this is considered a one inch elastic they give you more than enough so that you'll be able to go around and make the perfect adjustments now not all companies will give you an elastic so they are actually like really nice for doing that so normally I get mine um, in a big roll like this from Amazon I'm so sorry I thought I had two um, sets I so I usually I keep two sets on hand um, I keep a one inch and I keep a one and a half inch the one and a half inch obviously is the thicker one I do feel more comfortable using the one and a half on the majority of my wigs just because it's a nice thick band and it goes all around and your wig feels super tight and secure without being like too tight where you get a headache um, I'm completely out so I apologize for that I'll do it again and I'll show you guys um, in another video I just keep forgetting to order it but this one is what I've been using lately. This is the one I started out with. If you are doing a like a 4x4 closure, I recommend the 1 inch. If you get headaches a lot, I recommend the 1 inch even with the frontals and your wigs. Um, I always recommend this one. This one is going to be um, a lot easier to use. Honestly, they both work the same in the sense that you sew this on the right way. It's going to lay the lace frontal area down super tight and make your wig feel super secure and not like it's going to slide back or you know fly off or whatever and it's going to make you not have to necessarily use glue um the only difference between the one inch and the one and a half inch is just a personal preference so again the one and a half inch is going to feel much you're going to feel it so it's going to feel much more tight whereas this one is much thinner so you're going to forget it's there. So in a way, that's a good thing. You're going to forget it's there. Whereas that thick one, sometimes you know it's there, especially if you do it too tight. So if you're starting out, I probably would recommend this one. Um, these big spools of elastic, and this isn't even how big it came, um, are under 10 bucks. I want it's like 5 bucks. I'll have both lengths or sizes linked down below. Also, I've done um, tutorials with the elastic band method before, and I've shown you both sizes so i'll have all my elastic band tutorials linked down below for reference on how i used to do elastic band and the products that i used to use and exactly what i'm talking about about your inches so now that i've talked to you guys to death the next step is going to be to decide how much you use now the amount of elastic you use and how you place it are the two key things that's why i'm trying to talk this through as much as possible to not forget anything so i'm gonna take it some people will take it a little bit past the ear. I've always done it like right behind the ear. Like right here. Now if you really, really want your wig to fit snatched, I would bring it here. And then if you're doing a 4x4 closure wig, usually you'll bring it up to here when measure. So if you're doing a 4x4 closure wig, you measure it to about right here. If you want to take and put the wig on and see where the closure stops on this side, this side, kind of pull it back and then take like a marker or something and just mark, okay, it stops on this side right here and this right here so that when I take the wig off and I measure, I know it stops right here and right here. So this is where it's going to sit. 
um, with the frontal wig, you can kind of do the same thing where you kind of put the wig on. Matter of fact, I'll show you guys. So a lot of people will go ahead and like show measuring tape and things like that. I think that's a great technique. If you guys want to see me do it down to a science with the measuring tape, I'll definitely do that. But I don't do that in real life, so I'm not going to do that today. Um, as you can see, the wig is like moving. We're not going to bind it down. You can't just walk around like this. Even if you cut the lace off, we want it to lay snatched. We want it to sit like this, so to speak. So we're going to put the wig on and kind of see and feel where it feels comfortable with the wig on. So this is where like the wig stops and the lace starts. You want to put it on the lace, not on the wig cap. So about right here is where I'll pull it or want it to be. I'll go around on this way and kind of feel where I want it to be. I want it to be right here. And this is the amount that I would use. <laughs> it fell off. This is the amount I would use to go from here to here without really pulling it too much taut. Now that I know this is exactly what I need and this is what I predicted before I even put the wig on. As you can see it has me going a little bit in front of the ear opposed to behind the ear. And that's why it was important to try the wig on because every wig fits a little bit different. And sometimes you might find that the lace comes back behind the ear and that's where you need to place it. So try it on with the wig. Again without me kind of pulling it taut, this is where it's supposed to sit. Now, if you put the lace on like this, the wig is not going to fit tighter because the point of the elastic is to use the stretching elastic quality about it. You want the elastic to pull so it can kind of snatch and pull that wig back, so to speak. So figure out how much you need. So again, this is the amount that we need um, without pulling the elastic tight. We're going to put this away. We no longer need this. Now that we have the amount that we need without pulling it tight, we're going to pull it tight. So I'm going to pull it over about an inch. So if I take it off about an inch, let's pull it and see how it feels. This feels like it's going to be super secure, super tight without being too tight. So I'm going to take and cut this off. And this is about how much I'm going to take off to pull. So think maybe about an inch if you want it that sucker like super tight then you can go and do more than this but this is taking it from fitting perfectly to fitting a little bit more tight so that when we put it on the wig it's going to feel super tight so i'm going to check it again and remember now i have to stretch it for it to fit that way when i put the lace on it's going to pull the lace back so now that we have our perfect amount of elastic, let's go ahead and attach it to the wig. So now I went ahead and I've placed my wig onto my mannequin head. I placed the T-pin in the back so that it wouldn't lift. Since it is curly hair, it is a little bit more bulky. And then in the front, I placed three T-pins, one in the center, two on the sides, or parting your wig. So now you want to thread your needle. I'm using nylon thread and we have our elastic. So placement is key. You're going to place it on each side of the head. That way it'll pull really tight. So in this process, placement is key. It's very simple. You place the wig on your mannequin head and you're going to do one right here. Make it around and go like this. Once you do this and then you flip your wig inside out, it's going to flip over. So basically when you flip the wig right side in, it's going to fit like so. This is just an easier way to go ahead and put it on, you know, without having to pull it around the back way like so. So now I'm going to just place it here in the same way that the wig goes. You're going to do about a half an inch in front. You don't want it to be, so the hairline starts about right here. You don't want to put it exactly where the hairline is. And you also don't want to put it perfectly back here. So you want to go maybe about a half to a quarter inch up and just begin to sew. Now 
Now I've sewn it one time going this way. Now I'm going to sew it backwards going the opposite way again just to make sure it is secure. Now I'm done sewing, so I'm just going to take and have, you see how it's open? It's like an open stitch. I'm just going to take my fingers, wrap it one, two, three. I kind of usually do four. And then I pull it through. And that forms like literally the perfect knot. I'm also going to cut it a little bit further back. That way I have more than enough thread to be able to tie it and I usually will tie it like two to three times. That way I know that this is secure and it's not going to come off and I won't have to redo it or have to worry about, you know, sneezing and it falling off or falling apart so to speak. So now we're going to cut off the excess and we are done. So now that we have this side sewn so perfectly. We're going to take it around the front and we're going to place it the same exact way. So in this case, it's going to move. It's going to fly off if you let it go. So just to make it a little bit easier for you, you can take it around and you can pin it. Now I know I just said don't pin in the lace, but this is pretty much where the ear is. I'm never going to make a parting right here. So if there's a slight hole over here will be just fine and again you want to do it maybe half to a quarter inch so I'm going to kind of look at the other side and kind of gauge to make it as even as possible and now I'm just going to pin it so that's why we're going to pin it to keep it in place I'm going to add a second pin and now it's perfectly sitting where I want it to sit so that way I can just sew and I don't have to hold it in place now I like that placement, I'm going to move it over just a little bit and this should be good right here. Cut off the excess fluff. When you flip it over, you can see this is how it fits. So when you put the wig on your head, theoretically, this is what we have. It is going to fit super taut and it's super secure. So let's see if we did this wig justice. Also, before we're going to do that, we're going to add um, adjust the straps on the elastic in the back. Now, it feels tight to put on. I don't know if you guys can tell. But I literally have to slide it on. It is super tight. I wish I would have done a super good close up. But now you can see the baby hair and stuff because it's so much tighter. The actual frontal area on this wig is a little bit longer than my hairline. So it does exceed and come down to my ears. Definitely, even if you cut off the lace, cannot keep this like this. We're going to cut that off. Also for placement. You can see, remember I told you it's going to come right in front of my ear. It comes literally right in front of my ear, exactly where I said it would. It's flipped. You guys, let me flip it for you guys. But yeah, the band, I just flipped it back. The band comes right in front of my ear. Remember I told you it's going to come right in front of my ear? It fits and it's placed exactly where I wanted it to fit. Yeah, use a white chalky like eyeliner pencil. Remember we used to use um, those big eyeshadow pencils. Use one of those and kind of when you measure, take and mark it really, 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 really good. So that when you take the wig off and you put it on your mannequin head to sew, you know exactly where you wanted to do it. I was able to eyeball it because I've done this a million times. But yeah, put something like a chalk or a paint, something right here when you measure that way you for sure will get the placement right i told you it's much tighter you guys can see the difference in how well it lays where well, you can actually see the hairline now because it fits fits tight
you know if you want to keep this little piece so that you can like have a flap of sideburn then kind of flip and move the hair all the way up and go around it so we want to leave a tab so we're going to start and cut maybe like right here and make the remainder go pretty much around the ear that way this part of the wig fits around my ear perfect and if I wanted to have um, like sideburns or ear tap or however you want to call it um, I have that and I can obviously it's um, super full right now but I'll be able to like, cut tweeze and pluck right here and make some cute little sideburns if I wanted to now if I don't want this now because I'm leaving this I'm going to have to put some got to be glued or some bolt hold or some wig. I'm going to have to put something here to bond this down because you can't just leave this like hanging. You can't do that. So if you don't want to use anything to bond it down on a daily basis, which normally I don't, instead of cutting around the ear and leaving it, I would just cut this off too so there's nothing. Or you can cut less. I'll cut less a little bit later off camera, but for now I'm going to do the opposite side and I'm going to go ahead and style the rest of the wig off camera. And here we are with the final results. So I went ahead and co-washed it on camera a little bit for you. Also tweezed the hairline off camera. Now this wig is pre-plucked, so when I put the wig on you guys did see that it had a nice um, Start and it was pretty much good to go. You guys know I usually don't even tweeze my hairline. Lately, I've been in a good mood and trying to customize these wigs for life to give you guys the best possible results. And this is how much I did. So I definitely played in it a lot. As far as the hair, it is super full and voluminous, and I'm happy about that. Because sometimes when you get a pre-made wig, it's like a hundred. It feels like it's like a hundred percent density, and you really can't do much with it. This one is super full. So you guys see with the underside of the wig that there's not as much parting on the side, but I want it so badly a side part today. I really want to just put um, some cute, colorful body pins. Where's my body pin? So I think it would be cute to put some really cute, colorful bobby pins um, in this one, but it wouldn't match my outfit today. Um, actually, some gold ones probably would so I have a bunch of like gold bobby pins and I kind of will complement my top a little bit more or I can just do regular black so that um, it camouflages also I've been into these lately you guys remember these old school clips so I can just do like two of those right there and it'll help hold it because I really like the whole like it being to one side situation. I think this looks uber cute. Only complaint about this wig is I do wish I had a little bit more parting space. Other than that, the hair itself is gorgeous. It's super full. I'm kind of like shizzing it because I wanted it to be even bigger. It's full, but it's not heavy. It's like lightweight and bouncy. You guys did see on camera, I co-washed it. Not sure if I'm gonna leave that clip in there because I had to kind of get a style co-wash it in the bathroom which I've never done before um but with that I just used my Nexus Humectris and since then I haven't put any more product in it I just wanted to go ahead and co-wash it to get rid of the packaged curls and bring out the real curls and I'm so happy I did because if I would not have co-washed it I might not have achieved this level of awesomeness this is deep curly hair and deep curly hair mostly reminds me of African American hair like glam twins how beautiful and long and full and voluminous their hair is theirs is a little bit more coiled I would say I'm talking like I know them um also because it is so full and I kind of wanted to sit right here you can take and put a bobby pin I like kind of twist it a little bit subtly and put the bobby pin that way you don't have to worry about it drifting back in your face so just subtly put a bobby pin right here you won't even notice it's there but you don't have to worry about it like doing that when you're trying to slay and be cute but all in all i love this hair thank you Lou hair for sending it to your girl 
Hope you guys learned a few things about the elastic band method and how to make your wigs snatched and glueless. Also, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, share it with your friends. Still on the road to 80,000. Hopefully, we can get there really soon. Also, I'm going to keep saying it. As long as you hear me saying it, I'm going to keep reminding you. Really want to hit 100K this summer. So keep sharing my videos, keep liking my videos, keep commenting. All that helps. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.